Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dr. Marta Vasquez Ortiz. I'm the course director for the Allergy Postgraduate Program at Imperial, part of uh, the National Heart and Lung Institute. And it's really my pleasure to have this open day webinar with you, with you today, where we're going to spend an hour talking about the course and particularly what the course can offer to you and how this can uh, benefit you in, in your career in allergy. Um, probably we've met a few of you already as, as course applicants and, and people interested in the course. And I hope this next hour uh, gives you a bit more of a, of a better understanding of what the course can offer and particularly what the team, the core team behind the course, uh, what we do in terms of research, what we do in terms of clinical practice and how this all fits into the course and can benefit you as a student uh, with us. So we've put together a little agenda today. First, I will be talking about the course. Then uh, Professor Adnan Kustovic will be talking about the research in allergy at Imperial. Then we will be talking about the clinical services, both in pediatrics, pediatric allergy and adult allergy. And I will have Isabel Skifala uh, talking about her service at the Brompton. And then we're very happy to have some of our students uh, talking about their experience with us. And at the end, we will have 20 minutes for questions and answers from you. And that will be chaired by my colleague, uh, Dr. Bob Boyle. Um, you can put questions in the Q&A chat uh, and our course administrator, Jen, who's amazing, an amazing colleague, will be keeping an eye on the Q&A uh, chat and sort of replying to some questions straight away and then filtering some of the questions uh, for the Q&A later on. So uh, a very warm welcome. Thanks for joining. And I'm going to start, you know, talking a bit about the course. This is the, the key question to me that kind of summarizes where this course can take you. And it's very much about becoming a real expert in allergy. And this is kind of where you want to go. This is the right place to be. And you might ask, you know, why Imperial? Well, we're very proud to say that we are top eight university worldwide, which I think is absolutely outstanding. And that means that the quality of the teaching, the teachers, the resources you get, but also the students you come across are absolutely outstanding. And, you know, it's, it's kind of to us, to me, it's a real privilege to be part of this of this community. Anyway, so I was saying, you know, we like saying that, you know, Imperial is kind of the home of allergy because, you know, this is where allergy and immunotherapy was first developed in the world. And already, in, you know, over 100 years ago, Noon and Freeman were publishing about it in The Lancet. And then, you know, Dr. Bill Franklin who sadly passed away this year at the age of 108. You know, he was an absolute pioneer in the field of allergy and he set up the first allergy service in the UK at St Mary's Hospital where we're based and where all clinical service is based and he developed the pollen count for the first time in the world. So this environment has been absolutely inspiring. Can you uh, put the next slide please? Great. So, um, you know, this uh, amazing tradition of researchers and, and clinicians in the field of allergy has continued over the years. And I'm very proud to say that we have absolutely world leading experts. And I think this is the main thing you get from the course is really world class teaching. So you might see, you know, some of these faces might be familiar to you of so people really doing an absolutely great contribution in the different fields so of immunotherapy, like Professor Steve Daram, early origins of asthma, like Professor Kustovic, um, Professor Seglani and Andy Bush um, about difficult asthma and preschool fees, and colleagues like Paul Tana, Bob Boyle, uh, investigating about anaphylaxis and food allergy, and our colleague, uh, colleague dietitians, uh, Isabel Skifala, with a very clear focused interest in adult allergy and Roseanne Mayer in non IgE mediated allergies in children and nutritional deficiencies due to food allergies. So you really get this absolutely wealth of experience from very expert colleagues. And I have to say, probably about two thirds of the teaching comes from internal uh, colleagues. And you really get very, lots of contact to those. Uh, experts you, you know it's a really nice environment because we have about 20 25 students match max each, each year so you really can 
sort of come with your questions with your tricky cases and really sort of uh, share experiences there and, and hear from them. Um, next. Great, thank you. So we have a very extensive C levels. Sorry, can you go back? Sorry, it's just the animation. I was meant to be in charge of this slide. Sorry. Um, do you know, we have a very extensive C levels. It's really very detailed, very thorough uh, programs so from the very basics, so the immunology behind things to the very sort of latest and very fancy treatments in allergy. And I have to say, I think there is a very nice balance between the science behind things and the very sort of practical difficulties and practical decisions you face in, in, your, in your practice. Uh, we, we're not into didactic teaching. We very much student-centered, proactive learning, and it's a blended format with face-to-face -face teaching, but also quite a lot of online resources to enable more flexibility. It's a flexible course. Uh, most of our students are professionals, often with full time jobs and a family, and they find our part time course very much suitable for their needs. You generally come to London three times in a year for a week of face to face teaching and everything else happens, you know, around your own schedule whilst you're at home. It's a very international atmosphere as well with uh, students from different countries. And I think it makes it very rich, both for you as a, as, a, as a sort of as a cohort of students, but also for us because we, you know, continue to learn from you and really enjoy, you know, kind of discussing how allergy presents in different areas. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. So about our students. So our students are mainly healthcare professionals and some biomedical scientists, but mainly uh, sort of clinicians, particularly doctors, pediatricians or GPs with an interest in allergy and then uh, subspecialists such as allergists in training or dermatologists, chest physicians, uh, ENT. We always have a good number of uh, specialist nurses working in allergy or in asthma, dietitians. Next animation. And I just put there a few, you know, a few pictures of, of really nice alumni we've had in the last few years who nicely gave some feedback for our website and you can have a look there and see, you know, what they, how they found the course. Next slide. So uh, this is a bit of a boring slide about sort of the structure of the course and the learning outcomes. You might know that there are three levels, so PG certificate, uh, diploma and MSc, and you can choose, you know, where you want to stop and whether you want to continue up to MSc at PG Cert level, which is the first year. Um, you know, in terms of learning outcomes, we explore the pathophysiology of allergic disease and how this relates to diagnostic tests and treatment. We explore best practice and you start to critically analyse evidence and its value for clinical uh, practice and research and you start developing your own uh, research uh, projects from your sort of questions from your daily life. Next animation. So building on that for the postgraduate diploma, which is the second year, so you will be able to design evidence based diagnostic and management plans evaluate the benefits and the risk of preventive and advanced diagnostic and treatment strategies and apply evidence based medicine in improving your patient's care. And the last bit, if you progress into MSc, you know, you will be doing your own research project often within your clinical practice or you can do a lab project as well. So that will allow you to uh, develop further skills to critically analyse the literature, to develop a very good research project, and you will be planning, conducting and writing up your own original research and, you know, to the stage of communicating this, hopefully in a peer reviewed journal, in addition to your viva and your thesis. Um, next slide. So these are the modules. So in the first year, we offer three modules. So each is one week of face to face teaching, one per term. First is the scientific basis of allergy, where we cover the immunological mechanisms underlying allergic diseases and how this uh, relates to diagnosis and treatment. The second one is a practical module on the diagnosis and treatment of allergic disease. And the third one is the cutting edge of allergy, where we touch on all the new developments in research that are relevant for your clinical practice or your research. And you start developing your own research project there that might feed into your MSc. PG deep year, the second year, we have six modules touching on the different allergic diseases 
we have each module is two days and we have now merged the food allergy and the gastrointestinal disease module into a single four day module on food hypersensitivity that I think is going to be very attractive. And the last year that can be done within the second year as a third year is your research project if you go into MEC. Next slide. So teaching methods, again, we don't do just lectures, you know, we're very much into proactive and interactive uh, learning. We do lots of Q&A, case-based sessions, pro-con debates, hands-on sessions where you can sort of touch the different devices that you might have in clinic, different creams for eczema, we do role play with mock patients, we do simulation sessions, workshops, and then student-led sessions where you might work in groups and then present the results of your work. Next animation. And then in terms of assessments, uh, you know, each module has like a different assessment that is an authentic one, things that you're probably going to come across in your professional career, things that you might need to do or want to do, like writing a case report, running your own clinic, writing a research grant application or presenting a poster or an oral presentation at a congress, writing a leaflet, writing a review paper, so a number of different sort of skills that you will get to practice at the same time as you're assessed on your learning outcomes. Next slide. And of course, you know, you might be wondering what's going on with coronavirus. Of course, you know, in the COVID world, we had to move to remote delivery for the rest of this academic year. And there is a big movement in the college about this digital transformation. So basically translating this teaching that was blended, that was reliant to some extent in face to face to the complete remote environment, at least for this academic year, and how we can adapt those materials in a very meaningful, meaningful way, uh, making sure it is very high quality teaching. I have to say um, that for the autumn term, the decision of the college has been to predominantly have remote delivery and we will be offering some sessions face to face. And at the same time, those sessions will be available uh, remotely for those students who cannot make it or decide not to come face to face. So I will be happy to answer any more specific questions about that in the Q&A. Next slide. Next. Yeah, thank you very much. That was my, my first introduction. I'm sorry I'm a bit late, but I guess, you know, it's the technical problems that sort of have messed things up a bit. Uh, Thank you very much for your attention and uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Professor Adnan Kustovic, who's a professor in paediatric allergy at Imperial and he will be talking about the research at Imperial. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Marta. I hope you can see my slides. I hope you can hear me properly. Uh, Marta said, you know, why do allergy at Imperial? I mean, the question is really, where else would you want to do it? Uh, indeed, Imperial is the only, you know, one of the very few top 10 universities from the UK, and it's the only UK university that has actually climbed up the QS ranking for 2021. And that's even before the spectacular sort of uh, contribution from our researchers to COVID-19 has been taken into account. Uh, allergy, well, in allergy, we're not top 10. Allergy, we are really sort of at the very top, there or thereabout with Harvard. And this uh, photo here, this this is our South Kensington campus, and I would like you just to know this building here. This is Sir Alexander Fleming building, and within that building, a lot of remarkably interesting stuff is happening. That's where our wet laboratories are. That's where Mo Shamji is uh, trying to understand the mechanism underpinning tolerance. That's where Claire Lloyd and Sejal Saglani have put together animal models that are really giving us fundamentally important information about the mechanisms that are contributing to the development of allergic disease. But it's not only a uh, wet lab, it's not only basic science that is happening here. In this building, uh, our mathematicians and data scientists sit uh, next to basic scientists and clinicians really contributing to uh, team science and just across 
there is Department of Mathematics where methodologists are coming with the novel ways of analyzing data. So for those of you who have interest in mathematics, it's really, really a remarkable place to be in. We have two major clinical bases that are within walking distance from South Kensington campus. Uh, here, Royal Brompton Hospital, and you will hear about really extraordinary respiratory work that is going on there. Uh, that's the hub for severe asthma, both in childhood and in adulthood. Uh, that's where Andy Bush, Louis Fleming, Sage Al Saglani have their clinical base, but also their clinical research base. On adult side, Fan Chung, uh, Peter Barnes, Ian Atcock, are doing this really important work on understanding the mechanisms of diseases and developing novel mechanism-based treatments. Uh, here is St. Mary's Hospital, uh, where a lot of clinical activity in pure pediatric allergy is ongoing and where Bob Boyle, Paul Turner are running very important, very important clinical research studies trying to understand uh, food allergy. Uh, hospital is here on the left side, medical school building is on the right side, laboratory patients being brought together, uh, large labs where Seth Johnson is uh, investigating the interactions between allergens and viruses, you will meet all of these people. You will meet all of currently top rated researchers globally in allergy and respiratory medicine. But this is also a very interesting picture because this window here, this is what used to be allergy clinic at the end of 19th and the beginning of 20th century. Here on the ground floor, Leonard Noon administered the first injection of allergen specific immunotherapy in 1906. One floor above is where Alexander Fleming's laboratories were. And it is very likely that the famous story of how that Petri dish got contaminated with penicillin. Well, with penicillium, it probably originated from downstairs, from allergy department, where they were very, very interested in fungal allergy and were preparing extracts for skin prick testing. So whilst we are world leaders in research today, this is all built on solid foundation. And as Martha has said, this is really the birthplace of allergy as we know it. Here in this old but now renovated building, which also now uh, is a home of clinical child, uh, uh, children clinical research facility, which is ran by Paul and Bob. Here down here, this is where important discoveries that mark the rise of allergy as scientific discovery were made. The first injection, as I said, in 1906, the first publication in 1911, and the fantastic work by Leonard uh, Noon and John Freeman. Of course, you can't sort of talk about St. Mary's unless you talk about Sir Alexander Fleming's discovery of penicillin, and obviously the role that allergy has played uh, in that. Uh, Alexander Fleming was working with Freeman and following Second World War, another really important person came to work for Alexander Fleming. Bill Franklin, uh, returning as a prisoner of war from Japanese war camp, came and took a position of clinical assistant to what he calls Sandy Fleming, Sir Alexander Fleming. Now, in 1945, uh, Alexander Fleming was uh, received a Nobel Prize for discovery of penicillin, and in 1948 wrote his blockbuster book about penicillin. And that was when the word penicillin allergy was also mentioned. And there was, it's fair to say, a little bit of disagreement between Fleming and uh, Bill Franklin about what was the future of penicillin allergy? 
what Bill Franklin wrote was that with increased use of penicillin, allergic reactions would inevitably become more common. So Alexander Fleming crossed this sentence and the sentence that stands in the book even today is the more recent penicillin preparations rarely cause local or general reactions. I will leave it to you uh, to decide which one of two was right. But right from the start, what characterized this was multidisciplinarity and collaboration, because only through multidisciplinary, multidisciplinarity and collaboration can you really come to major uh, discoveries. Now, whilst working with Alexander Fleming, really, uh, Bill Franklin was much more interested in work that Noon and Freeman did. He worked as Freeman Registrar and then took on his patients and allergy clinic and took on the whole concept of immunotherapy to deliver the first double-blind randomized placebo control trial that has demonstrated very clearly that high dosage is superior to low dosage of subcutaneous immunotherapy and that when you remove the proteins, you remove the protective effect of the extract. Tremendously important studies published as early as 1954. And then in a spectacular set of studies, Steve Durham during 1980s and 1990s in Brompton has not only described very clearly what is desensitization and tolerance, but also how long you need to take the treatment to achieve tolerance and then went on to set real scientific basis for understanding the mechanism of allergen specific immunotherapy, which now is being pursued uh, in fantastic work by Mo Shanji. So please, while you're here, make sure that you meet these people and get most out of it. But doing the studies is one aspect. What I think characterized the imperial approach to it was translation into patient benefit. By mid 1960s, it is estimated that up to 30,000 patients were treated at St. Mary's Allergy Clinic with allergen specific immunotherapy. 30,000 patients, imagine that. The wealth of experience is extraordinary. And this ethos of translation of any findings into improvement in healthcare for benefit of our patients was always the hallmark of allergy. Bill Franklin, we sadly, sadly lost Bill uh, 10 weeks ago. He passed away at 108th year of life on 2nd of April this year. And if there is one thing that I really, really, really regret is that you will not be able to hear his amazing lecture. He has given lectures at these calls even when he was at the tender age of 105. Uh, please read the obituary to Bell Franklin in Guardian. Uh, they say this is pioneering immunologists who improve lives of million hay fever sufferers by inventing the pollen count. Well, he invented much more than pollen count, but he was so bright that he actually put the pollen counter at the roof of St. Mary's Nurses Home. This is how it looked like in mid 1950s. And he observed this clear dose response relationship between the level of pollen and the severity of symptoms. Pioneering indeed. But the mantle has been taken by the researchers today, bringing Imperial to the top of the pile, as I said, neck and neck with Harvard in terms of research output. Unlike conferences where you see speakers being somewhere there on the podium, you will be able to interact very closely with top class researchers and top class uh, clinicians. So please make sure that you use it. That will be invaluable. And for those of you who decide to continue with masters, this is one of the best places to de deliver really solid, worthy master's research project. And with that, there's a depth and breadth of work that we're doing. You will be able to learn more when you come. So back to you, Marta. And let's try and uh, 
finish this as soon as we possibly can. <laughs> Thanks so much, Adnan. I hope you can yeah, hear and see me. Um, yeah. So Helen is going to control my slides because I, I you know, I've proved I'm a bit unreliable today. So um, I'm going to be talking now about the clinical allergy service at Imperial NHS uh, and how, you know, the expertise uh, of the team fits into the course. Can I can I see the next slide, please? So I'm, I'm one of the consultants in the team. Um, you know, we're part of Imperial College uh, Healthcare NHS Trust, which is uh, the largest hospital trust in the NHS. And this is the first uh, UK academic health sciences centre uh, aiming to become top five in the world for clinical care research and education. Next, please. So the Pediatric Allergy Service is one of the largest tertiary referral centres in Europe. We see over 6,000 children every year with a whole spectrum of allergic diseases. We are the reference for Northwest London, but we actually get referrals from the whole of the country and some, sometimes international patients as well. We have a very focused interest on complex patients, on holistic care and on patient education. Next. We are very much a multidisciplinary team. We, you know, the team is, is uh, formed by paediatric allergies. We, of course, have uh, trainee doctors as well. A good group of specialist nurses led by uh, Rachel Griffin. We have a group of allergy dietitians, speech and language therapists, and a psychologist. Next. So these are my colleague consultants within the team, uh, Atnan, Portana, Bokboy, Helen Cox, Parvi Sabivi, Claudia Go, Sharon Hall, myself and uh, Maeve Kelleher and Costa Scott Surpass. And we are very much involved, very heavily involved in the MSC. So we do lots of the teaching and we bring, you know, our kind of clinical expertise and the very sort of interesting cases we see uh, to the course as well. Next slide. Our areas of interest as a clinical service, as I said, complex multisystem allergic disease. So they're very sick children with, you know, allergy affecting all the possible sort of target organs in a, in a, in a quite severe way. Complex food allergy, including food induced atopic eczema and non IG mediated gastrointestinal food allergy. We have an interest in adolescent transition and we have a dedicated clinic for this. We also have a dedicated interest in, in health education to promote self-management for our patients and on tra translational research. So really making research accessible to our patients. And this includes, for instance, access to our uh, food immunotherapy trials. Next slide. So in terms of activities, so we have lots and lots of clinics, you know, general allergy clinic, adolescent transition clinic, immunotherapy complex multi-system allergy clinics that run as day cases. We have joint clinics where the allergy consultant sits with uh, another consultant, say a gastro consultant or a dermatology consultant or an asthma consultant to manage the very difficult and severe patients. Next. And we've developed a model where part of our multidisciplinary team also do their own clinic. We have dietitian led clinics, nurse led clinics, both for general allergy and also for education, mainly around asthma and anaphylaxis and food allergy. Next. We have a number of days case procedures. Uh, we do about 70 challenges, food and drug challenges per week. We have inhalant and veron immunotherapy and biologics, of course. Of course, all of this now has changed with COVID and we're seeing how we can you know, get back to our foot, you know, uh, in the in the current sort of uh, world and the challenges. We get referrals, of course, from primary, secondary care, and we get internal referrals from the pediatric world, intensive care and A&E. So, you know, our trainees get a lots of experience, you know, in, in all the, in the whole spectrum of allergic diseases. Next. And this is, you know, the team. You are a big team in a, in a small space right now. And, you know, as I said, we're heavily involved in the course, uh, including our dietitians, our nurses. And we very much like sharing our experience and also learning from your experience and how we can contribute and help you with our, um, you know, kind of resources and protocols and things like that. 
for you to develop uh, your services further. So thank you very much. Um, it's my pleasure now to introduce Dr. Isabel Skipala. She's a consultant dietitian at the Brompton and she will be talking about the adult allergy service there. Lovely, thanks. Thanks very much, Marta. I think Helen is going to do my slides as well because knowing my luck, it will also be a problem. So um, if I can just um, have the first slide, please. The next slide. Thank you. So we, as you can see, also have a team, somewhat smaller team, uh, but uh, nonetheless, we're, we're a very mixed multidisciplinary group of people who are um, very keen to uh, share our expertise and support uh, the course uh, in every way. Next slide, please. So Professor Stephen Durham, um, you've heard Adnan already mention. Uh, Professor Durham is, uh, I've known Professor Durham for a, an awfully long time. We've both worked at the Brompton for many years together. Um, he is the most fantastic um, uh, example of um, someone who has uh, had a stellar career in allergy. He's done uh, groundbreaking work in immunotherapy. Um, Dr. Guy Scadding, uh, our other consultant allergist, who's also done a lot of work on uh, immunotherapy. Um, I'm a consultant allergy dietitian. I think I was the first uh, dietitian to be a consultant allergy dietitian in the UK. Um, and uh, I also uh, run my own food allergy clinics, um, supported, of course, by my medical colleagues um, uh, who are invaluable for case discussions. We have uh, an allergy trainee. We also have uh, clinical fellows. Very importantly, we have two uh, nurses. Um, Elena is our specialist allergy nurse and she runs our immunotherapy service with support from Kay, our allergy support nurse, who is actually uh, off at the moment supporting her new baby. Um, so we're missing her very much, but we're lucky we have uh, a good combined um, service with research. So Sasha is uh, helping us out at the moment uh, doing uh, immunotherapy. We have a number of other honorary allergists and uh, uh, who help out with our clinics. Um, can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, I'm, oh no, sorry, can you go back? Thank you. Um, so I'm very pleased to say that um, in February this year, uh, we have become one of the very few services to be accredited by the Royal College of Physicians for our allergy service. Um, it was a lot of work, but um, we feel felt very proud uh, to, to become a, a accredited. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, now, uh, Anand's already mentioned Mo Shamji. Here's a picture of Mo. Um, Mo and the the team up at the uh, uh, up at the Franklin Wilkins building um, work incredibly closely with us. We have joint meetings together on a Thursday. Um, we learn a huge amount from the research team there. They're integral to our work and, and we're integral to theirs. And so there is a great opportunity to uh, develop skills um, that, uh, you know, that a combined service like the one here and the one at uh, St Mary's uh, both offer. Next slide, please. So we have the allergy team and uh, as you could see, we have great support from many different services. Uh, for example, we have um, a very, we're part of the uh, asthma and allergy care group here. And so we do have a lot of support from our asthma colleagues. Uh, we have good uh, physiotherapy services, specialist speech and language therapy uh, on site, um, and also accredited lab services uh, who um, provide uh, lots of very specialist component allergy testing for particularly for food allergy. Um, we also work very closely with uh, gastroenterology service at Chelsea and Westminster and I run a joint food allergy gastro clinic with one of the gastroenterologists and we also run uh, an eosinophilic esophagitis clinic together and I think it's been uh, like Imperial we have a very good wide-ranging uh, 
uh, uh, relationships with many different services. Um, next slide, please. So um, we also have an allergy network. Uh, we have an adult allergy network with the Imperial uh, Adult Allergy Service. And of course, we have close links with the NHLI, as already said. Next, please. Um, and as well as that, we are very um, active, not only in the British Society of Allergy and Clinical Immunology, where um, certainly uh, many of us have had roles within the uh, group there, uh, but also the European Academy of Allergy and Clinical Immunology. Next slide, please. Um, so what do we do? Well, we do all the things you might expect a service to do. Uh, obviously, asthma, although we have a specialist asthma service, many of their patients are referred for allergy uh, evaluation. We run a special uh, rhinitis and rhinosinusitis clinic with uh, the ENT surgeons from Imperial. Uh, we also see patients with urticaria and angioedema and undertake uh, biologic uh, treatments for those patients. Um, uh, and of course, next slide. Uh, of course, with rhinitis and sinusitis, uh, we uh, in particular for rhinitis run an allergen immunotherapy service. Uh, we mainly do subcutaneous uh, immunotherapy in this uh, clinic. Um, uh, largely because uh, the uh, sublingual is, is less uh, well supported. Uh, next, please. So, of course, we also have drug allergy, uh, antibiotics far and away being the main uh, allergy allergens that we uh, uh, challenge with, but uh, there's a whole wide range. Um, we perform drug challenges uh, every other week. Uh, next slide, please. So, and finally, food allergy, of course, I had to end with that being my specialty. Uh, you can see that we do quite a lot of skin prick testing and not usually with beer, but in this particular case it was. And we also do lots of food challenges um, and the pictures you can see are people having challenges. Uh, in fact, one of our challenges was a patient who had a reaction with alcohol and a meal. So we did try and replicate that as much as we could. Um, next slide. That's, uh, so this is just showing you uh, the number of challenges we've undertaken on adults at the Brompton and you can see tree nuts, peanuts, shellfish, etc. Those are the, the common ones. Um, so I hope this uh, has given you a, a quick overview of the allergy team here. Uh, we're very, very delighted to be involved in the MSC and we've all been involved in it for many years uh, and look forward to meeting some of you. Thank you. I'd like to introduce now um, Dr. Mairead Sheehan, who is a current student on the postgraduate diploma year. Hello, thank you to the Imperial for inviting me to speak. Uh, just to correct Isabella, I'm not a doctor. I'm actually a nurse specialist and uh, I'm currently studying my MSc uh, with the Imperial and uh, I'm very happy to talk for a few minutes on my experience as a student. Um, I've just wrote a few notes down. I'm going to read them out if that's OK. So my name is Moraid and I'm a clinical nurse specialist, as I said, in paediatric allergy. And I began my studies with the Imperial in 2018 and I'm currently doing my research project to complete my MSc in allergy. Uh, just to give you some personal context, I live in Dublin in Ireland, so I'm an international student and I work full time in a very busy tertiary allergy service in a paediatric hospital. Uh, I was already working for a period of time before I started this course and had extensive enough experience from a nursing perspective. Um, we do everything in our service that everything has, that has just been mentioned on the slide, so I did feel I had some previous experience to bring to the course, which helped me a lot. Uh, but starting this MSc in allergy with Imperial was really the icing on the cake for me. It was a wonderful opportunity to study in depth all the current theory and research covering every aspect of allergic disease. I found the practical aspects of the course very helpful. There's a lot of hands on learning skills you will perfect in your working life, but get to practice possibly for the first time in a very well supported, friendly environment with your fellow students. 
Uh, I've traveled from outside the UK for each of my course modules. London is a beautiful city. I traveled alone each time and I think most prospective students will factor in, uh, will, will consider this uh, when taking on international study and it may cause you to pause, but my experience has been nothing but positive. I found London wonderful, easy and welcoming. The tube and the airports were so well organized for people not familiar with the area and I used app based accommodation to find places to stay very easily around the college so I could walk, which was lovely. Uh, the nicest aspect for me was the family feeling within the allergy course. Within a day, our group of students had bonded and the course facilitators are just fantastic. There is no them and us aspect to this course. It is like one lovely group of friends. There are some special organized and spontaneous social events too, which is very fun each time you go over. So there's lots of nice aspects. It's not all just about learning. Um, I never felt alone in this big city and I knew if I had any issues or concerns that I had a group of course leaders who were there for me and from a personal perspective that sense of home from home really helped me to engage in the course fully and soak up all the opportunities provided to learn and expand my knowledge. The lectures are not big busy rooms, it's very personal and relaxed atmosphere and becoming involved in discussions and debates was easily achieved and enhanced my learning and helped students bond into a supportive group. The lectures and teaching is delivered, as already said, by world class medical and allied health experts who are involved in incredible research, which is changing allergy practice in real time. As a student, I found this absolutely wonderful, not only to be taught by the people at the coalface of allergy research, but also to have so much opportunity to chat and discuss the research and ideas with them. It was very exciting and rewarding. Uh, practical stuff, the library service at Imperial is excellent. I was worried about the distance aspect of learning and the accessibility of academic literature, and I need not have worried at all because it's actually set up really well to study from home. Uh, there's great face to face training and teaching if you if that uh, goes ahead in the future as well. I'm sure some aspect of it will, uh, which sets you up very well for doing all your assignments and everything from a home base um, and any any queries I had were answered very quickly by the lecturers and course coordinators and never delayed me reaching any deadlines for any assignments. Uh, the course helped me become a better allergy nurse specialist, collating all my previous experience with a deep understanding of the immunological mechanisms involved in allergic disease and how our understanding of disease and the treatments we provide our patients and future patients are changing rapidly. There is an extensive amount of suggested reading, including essential reading and recommended, um, all these choices are picked by lecturers and course leaders uh, and they're very helpful and relevant and I found I spent my time between modules and assignments reading the literature which helped guide my learning a lot. From a personal point of view, the course taught me academic skills such as how to create and present academic posters, how to write journals and case reports and how to evaluate and critique research which is so beneficial and then hopefully now at the moment to create and conduct my own unique research was very personally rewarding. Uh, since starting the course, I've brought lots of positive practical changes to my uh, workspace and um, it, <clears throat> the course and everybody involved in the course really helped me develop professional skills. I don't think I would have developed without doing the course and I brought them back to our practice here in Dublin, which was is fantastic to see as well. Um, it is not a course you will do with your eyes half shut and I think that is important. It is a very high standard, but the work you put in will really sharpen your skills in the area and which in my experience will enhance your professional ability and make you an even more value, valued member of any allergy service. I came into this course with a decent, as I said, varied set of experience in peds allergy, but I do feel the course will benefit any MDT member that works in community or hospital based allergy services and the content co covered will apply to all levels of experience. Uh, last thing I want to say is working in allergy is tremendously rewarding for anyone considering it. The course will ensure your knowledge and understanding of allergic disease is current and will help provide you with the skills to deliver the best level of care to your patients and their families. As a student, you will learn so much you didn't know and you will hopefully feel excited to go back and work on enhancing your own practice with a new outlook and skills. Thank you. I think now it's over to Kostos to give us another student eye view, if he's ready. Um, 
Yeah, so can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so hi, my name is Costas. Um, I'm currently one of the pediatric allergy consultants at St. Mary's Hospital. I've been a consultant here for the last year, but I've been around at St. Mary's being a registrar in allergy as well as in infectious diseases for the last one to two years. Um, I just have to say that the last uh, talk was uh, beautifully done and I think it's kind of encapsulated exactly what uh, St. Mary's and the Imperial Allergy Course is about and it's, uh, I find it very daunting to add anything more. Um, what, what I would like to show is the, the transition that I've gone through in the last four years since I've decided to undertake the allergy course at Imperial. It's just been about just more than four years when I was trying to decide what to do with the latter part of my training that would have shaped my career in the end. And uh, the honest truth, I didn't have any allergy background up to that point as most pediatric uh, trainees and most doctors, I would say. Uh, the learning that I had in allergy was by pharmaceutical reps that used to come to hospitals and tell you that every single baby had Camille protein allergy, and that you should put them on specialized formulas. And I was suggested to consider doing the allergy MSc at Imperial. And before I committed, I decided to do a couple of courses. And uh, it was in 2016 in February when I came to do the course in allergic airway disease. And I saw a lecture by none else but Professor Adnan Gastovic. And I decided on that day that I was going to do the course and I had to come to St. Mary's to work. And since then, I haven't looked back. I've, uh, from no allergy experience within four years, I was fortunate to have two beautiful rotations in the two London centers to do allergy. And I've been supported in pursuing my career and my dream in becoming now an allergist through the support that the course has given me. It has given me the, I think, fundamental principles of both learning within pediatric and adult allergy uh, it has given me guidance into how to uh, learn to process academia and uh, learn how to do research. And it has given me the confidence to go forward. Since then, I have started attending international and national courses by the BSACI, by IACI, by the PAM in London. And I have to say in all honesty that the lectures we're getting uh, within the course are of the same, if not of greater caliber. Um, I don't want to go on and on about it. I want to thank the course for what they have given me in the last few years and in shaping me to become an allergist and I hope a good allergist in the future. And I think now I'm going to give the microphone to Bob. Thank you. Thank you, Costas. Um, so I'm Bob Boyle. I'm Deputy Director of the, of the Master's course and uh, we've got a few questions that have come in. And uh, now is your opportunity, if you have any more uh, questions, to put them in the Q&A box. And we've got our panelists here uh, to try and address any issues um, uh, you want to be uh, discussed. So first question here is um, uh, for Marta, I think. Uh, so it's someone who says, I'd be keen to gain laboratory experience alongside doing the PG cert. So that's the first year uh, uh, course. Um, is there anywhere or someone in particular who would be able to give some advice on how best to go about this? So uh, over to you, Marta, on that one. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, the first year, you know, because the first module is about scientific basis of allergy and the immunology behind allergy. I think that gives you a very good understanding of, of the immunological principles and it will be a very good opportunity also to think what sort of uh, project you might want to become involved in, that could be your MSc project going forward. Or if it is purely having some lab experience, you know, it doesn't come say within the course, but in the same way we do with colleagues who want to come and observe in the clinical service, we could discuss say with uh, more Samji, for instance, how we could make it happen, you know, to have an observership within the lab in any sort of area you might be interested. Uh, I'm not sure if Atnan would like to add something to that. I mean, depending on which particular area you're interested in, I think it's well worth talking to either Mo 
or to Claire Lloyd or to Sejal Saglani. So there is a, there are plenty of opportunities and I'm sure we can accommodate that. I think I think I'd recommend that you 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 get accepted onto the onto the course first and and then don't wait to start the course, but but contact uh, the lab that you're interested in um, as um, and I said that give you a couple of good names there um, so that you can say I'm an MSc student. I'm starting in the autumn. Um, you know, what can I do about arranging a, a, a placement in your lab and um, do that as a parallel process? Um, if all else fails, you will meet the lecturers on the course and that will be another opportunity. Uh, I mean, if there are any problems, Bob, I would be more than more than happy to take it and talk to tomorrow. So you can contact either me or Bob and we'll take it further. Um, so a couple of um, easy ones which I think I can feel myself. So uh, I work full time clinically. Will this course fit around my work? Um, yes, uh, many of the students, as you heard, are full time clinicians. Um, I, perhaps we could put that to um, Costas or Mairead. Do you want to say anything about the the sort of um, uh, burden of the course and how, how easily or, or how much difficulty it was to fit it around a full time clinical job? From a doctor's perspective, um, it, it used to be face to face. I believe now it's going to change to be less face to face. But even when it was face to face, it was easy to get the study leave required because it's not so many days in a year. And in terms of the assignments and the studying, what I would say definitely for the first two years, it's about being organized. And if you are organized, it's easily doable. And you can match it with your clinical um, responsibilities. The, the dissertation will take a bit more commitment and it does matter exactly what kind of project you will do. And I will let Maria also answer. Um, yeah, I agree uh, with Costa. For me, I would say just from a practical point of view, I probably spent a month doing each assignment just to give you an overall. Um, you know, I'm like a lot of people. I work full time. I have three children. I have a busy life. So but I still I, I, I you know, it's got to do, I think, a little bit with your passion for allergy as well. I loved learning about it and um, because each area that you do within your work commitments for the course, is so different. Uh, you kind of immerse yourself a little bit in each assignment and you know you will eat and drink it for a few weeks and then submit it and move on to the next thing, but you do learn a huge amount. It is doable, but you need, as Costa said, you need to be organized like any course and you can't sit in between modules. Uh, you need to keep your learning up as well. So that's how I've managed anyway. So. Thanks, Mary. Um, Question, uh, I'm not clinical. Will this course be suitable for me? And uh, we've certainly had quite a few non-clinical uh, people through the course over the years. Um, Marta, is there anything you wanted to say specifically about non-clinical applicants? What should they think about before um, applying for a course, which is fair to say the majority of students have a clinical background, but but not all. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's um, it's it's relevant for people who are not purely clinical. I think it gives you a very good understanding and broad overview of all the different aspects in allergy. And of course, you make it more relevant to what matters to you. And if this is, say, clinical research or if this is a lab job, you might not be interested in how to sort out a case, but still a lot about diagnosis and management will be applicable to you and you, you will find it interesting. We've had biomedical scientists, we've had epidemiologists in the course, and overall they were all very happy. So, you know, we think it's relevant, yeah. Yeah, I think you want to look at the at the modules and what's what's you know the the, the learning objectives and just check that that fits with your career path. But as as Marta says, it's been a great success with um, those non-clinical students we've had before. Um, one other question, um, which I think I can feel this one. Can I apply for the full MSc instead of starting on the PG cert? Um, essentially, everyone has to start on the PG cert. Um, uh, I don't know, Marta, do you want to talk about the process of how to become an MSc student um, once you're on the PG cert? So once you started the first year. So, um, yeah, thank you. Um, you know, it's basically they call it established that everybody has to join at PG set level and then you decide as to whether you want to progress into PG dip and into MSc. So it's kind of all open, but you cannot register purely for the MSc to start with, but it's purely an administrative issue. Yeah, so you have to get through the 
PG cert before you're eligible to, to go on to the masters. Uh, some people try and start their research project earlier if you can find a suitable supervisor, but um, in reality, it doesn't usually start till um, at least the second year of the course uh, for most people. It'd be fair to say. A uh, question for Adnan. Um, uh, can you go through what type of research projects are available on the MSc pro programme? As I have told you, we are really sort of proud to foster team science and it depends on what people's interests and skills are uh, and you know really to deliver proper master's project where it's genuine research project rather than just sort of glorified review it takes commitment but also you need to capitalize on your skill and de develop new skills uh, the projects span from uh, purely bench-based laboratory projects working on uh, basic mechanisms of allergy both in terms of development but also uh, in terms of mechanisms of immunotherapy uh, then there are uh, really interesting projects that uh, a lot of students who are good in mathematics and who are interested in data analysis uh, uh, have taken in previous years where they capitalize on the large repositories of data that we hold here, both from birth and patient cohorts. Uh, there are projects uh, where people who are more interested in qualitative work can really develop their skills. Uh, Pretty much we cover every area that you can think about uh, from dry lab, wet lab, clinical research, purely clinical projects. So it really depends on your interest. Whatever your interests are, we can most certainly accommodate them. Thank you. Thank you, Adnan. And I think it's fair to say that the project doesn't have to be based at, at Imperial. So um, quite often it's a, a local project for you in your local context. Um, and but we will always provide you with a, an Imperial co-supervisor whose, whose role really is to just make sure that the project keeps on track and is of a suitable you know, quality and, and design to uh, meet the MSc requirements. Um, OK, so I think um, that's our time up for the Q&A's. Um, there's been quite a lot of chat on the on the um, Q&A panel, um, but I think most of the other questions there have been addressed. I think one just might be worth revisiting quickly Cost us some radio. If you've got a quick minute, so someone asked again about the time commitment. How many hours of studying would you need to do in a week if you're doing the MSc? So uh, or let's say the PG cert. So over that first year, on average, how much time in a week would you need to commit to your masters? To is it is it an hour a week or several hours a week? So how, how much time does it take to get through? Well, I, I guess everyone varies uh, in in the speed that the study. And also the modules vary a bit. So I found that I studied a bit more when I was studying for the exam of the first module, which was a lot of immunology and it's going to be MCQ. Um, I think the other assignments, you tend to spread it more from finishing the module until the assignment is due. So I've never really kind of counted the hours. Uh, I don't know if Merit has a better kind of account of how many hours you've spent? I think you're on mute. You might be on mute. Is it me or? Uh, yeah, Marie, Marie, oh, would sorry. You? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, very similar to Costa. Um, again, I studied a lot more in the first year because it was so, you know, the immunological mechanisms are, are difficult. I came from a nursing background as well. I didn't have the clinical degree uh just well I did have a clinical uh, anyway uh so I did spend a lot more time studying for that but I would say probably most Saturday mornings and Sunday mornings if I was working up through an assignment I would spend doing my research and then writing up so yeah right. and then thank little you. gaps in between yeah that's lovely thank you um and then uh, one one last this is the last question um do you see any potential PhD opportunities for someone who completes the MSc course um, so we have we've had a number of uh, MSc students have completed MS PhDs either with us or or elsewhere, and it's certainly a fantastic launching pad, a place to connect with suitable supervisors and and throw some ideas around. Um, uh, Adnan, would you have any specific comments about the uh, opportunities to move from uh, this MSc into uh, a doctorate? Uh, 
I mean, I totally agree with you. I think from our point of view, this is one of the preferred routes of uh, sort of getting into PhD because you get a real thorough grounding, understanding the problem space, understanding the whole area, getting experience with basic research methodology, delivering masters, and that puts you really in a prime position to pursue academic careers should you desire to do so. Uh, what I would say is because of the nature of our students, I always hope that we would have more students like half of our uh, master students continuing, but obviously, you know, people have very, very, very busy jobs that they uh, need to go back to. Uh, opportunities are there and uh, for us, uh, this is this is really a sort of great way to introduce students to the area, but also for us to ascertain the quality and drive of people. Yeah, we we really want that to happen, and you know, come and talk to us, and we'll we'll support you and encourage you in that direction if uh, if that's what you want to do. And I think Bob is absolutely right for people who are interested in that. Uh, actually indicating it to the course director and some of the supervisors relatively early during the course is a good thing to do because then there is enough time to come up with a program of work but also to identify funding opportunities and uh, get you in a position that you can sort of seamlessly continue. And some, sometimes people have dropped out early after the PG cert year or something if, if the right opportunity comes at the right time. So we've certainly had quite a few students who've, who've done that. So thank you. It's been a great session, I think. Lots to think about. Um, thank you to everyone who's who's joined as a panelist and given up their time uh, this afternoon. Uh, and thank you all for um, your interest in the course. I uh, hope to see some of you in the autumn. Hope to see all of you in the autumn. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for joining. Uh, bye. Bye bye from all of us. Bye.